Great Sankey High School is thrilled to be part of the Champions and Change program. We were lucky to have a visit from Olympic gymnasts Beth Twiddle and Puddy Bear, who came to launch the campaign and answer questions from our students. my dad so from tiny I was always very energetic I was always upside down and on back, uh, jumping on mum and dad's bed climbing trees basically getting into mischief with my brother so my parents thought we need to put her into sport get rid of all that energy um, I grew up with a hockey stick in my hand and far too cold didn't like getting hit um, tried ballet tried horse riding tried swimming and my dad said do you want to go along to gymnastics and I wasn't a big fan at first um, but once I did my first competition, I kind of realised that was the one sport that I loved. Um, I always wanted to be a physiotherapist. Um, from the age of eight, I had a lot of injuries within the gym, so I was getting used to sort of going to see the physio, and I really liked what they did. Um, but throughout my schooling and my university, I was very much... Um, in the gym. I was doing maybe 30 hours a week plus full-time school or full-time university um, so I just wasn't able to fit both both things into my life. I had a place to start physiotherapy after 2012 but it was three weeks after the Olympics finished and to be honest I just wanted to go on holiday and <laughs> have a bit of chill time so um, physio was always the thing I wanted to do. Gymnastics never occurred to me that it could actually be a career and a lifelong kind of thing. Um, it was only probably when I was about 19, 20 that I realised that gymnastics was kind of taking that route um, rather than doing your typical career. Um, my dad. Um, I never, within gymnastics, um, we didn't really have any British gymnasts that were kind of succeeding on the international stage. So I didn't really have anyone to look up to. I kind of had to look to other gymnasts from around the world. Um, throughout my gymnastics career, um, I looked up to Kelly Holmes. She had a lot of injuries, which I also had, and she still achieved sort of two Olympic gold medals and amazing amount of other sort of achievements. So I always looked at her and thought, if she can do it with all the injuries and the setbacks that she's had, then why can't I do it? Who's next? probably would have laughed at them. <laughs> um, to be honest, I did gymnastics because I loved it. I never did gymnastics to kind of go to the Olympics. It was only when I was about 18 that, that I realised that the Olympics was a possibility. Um, whereas you hear of a lot of sports people, they start their sport because they've watched it on the TV, they've watched the Olympics. But <coughs> for me, I did it because I loved it. Um, had school not been in the way, I would have been in the gym 24 hours a day, seven days a week. For my mum and dad, I think it was a cheap babysitting option. <laughs> Chuck her in the gym, it's fine. <laughs> um, so I actually retired from gymnastics two years ago. Um, I'd achieved a lot more than I ever thought I would within my sport. And after London 2012, I went back into the gym about three or four weeks after the Games. Um, but my motivation had changed. I found rather than do my own training, I was sort of going towards the younger gymnasts and wanting to help them. So nowadays I spend a lot of time in schools trying to encourage children to get involved in sport. Obviously I'd love it to be gymnastics, but just sport in general. Um, and I've also got my own company where kids can get involved in gymnastics and have a go at it. Just like for myself, I tried a lot of sports before I found gymnastics, so I would love them to just try it. If they try it and think, do you know what, gymnastics is not for me, then that's absolutely fine, because that's what I thought about hockey. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a difficult one. I think for me, I was very lucky that my character was very much of... If someone told me I couldn't do something or I failed or I didn't quite achieve what I wanted, I was always more determined to go and prove that person wrong and say, actually, I can achieve it. Um, one of the biggest disappointments in my career was Beijing 2008. My 
one dream going to the Olympics was just to go, and that was in 2004. But in 2004, I was at the Olympics. I watched the medal ceremonies, and I was jealous. I wanted one of those Olympic medals. So for 2008, that was my dream, to go to the Olympics, pick up an Olympic medal. Thank you very much. End my career and move on. But actually, most times in life, plan A never works. So um, Beijing, I came fourth. And it was one of the hardest moments of my career to get over because I didn't know whether I could pick myself back up again and work another four years to go to London. Um, I think you've always got to find a bright side, a, something to take away from it. And for me, I just had to learn from that experience in Beijing, remember that heartache and work harder for 2012. And the days when I was leading into 2012 where I was thinking, I don't really want to get out of bed and do six hours of training. I just remember how I felt after Beijing and thought I don't want to feel like that again in London. I think it's this whole campaign, the fact that it's a programme children for children. So it's you guys that are really at the forefront of the programme. It's, it's very easy for adults to stand and tell us this is what you've got to do. But actually, if the programmes come from the children, um, they'll be more engaged with it. They'll more likely want to get involved with it. And like, I work with children on a daily basis. And if you tell them what to do, most of the time they look at you and want to do the opposite. So the fact that this programme is very much for you guys, you can get involved yourselves, get your mates along, have a bit of fun at the same time. And obviously Children in Need is such an, an amazing charity, the amount of children that benefit from it and the difference that a small thing can make is it's mind-blowing. In gymnastics was definitely London 2012 because for me, I used to look, well I do love the big sort of competitions, the atmosphere, but London 2012, there was that pressure that I'd put on myself to pick up that Olympic medal. I knew that I was sort of old for gymnastics and I didn't have another opportunity to pick it. So um, yeah, I was pretty scared there, but then also sort of jumping out of a plane, I did skydiving and trying to raise money for older hay. Um, I've done wing walking, I've done ab sailing and yeah, I love doing all the adrenaline stuff. What activities? Um, public speaking, so this. <laughs> um, yeah, basically standing up in front of people really terrifies me um, and talking in front of people and drama, anything like acting, singing, anything like that. If you asked me to do the X Factor auditions or anything like that, it just would totally put me out of my comfort zone. Um, most of the time it was just going home and seeing family and friends. People think you have these big sort of celebrations, but actually I spend so much time away from home um, competing or training. Um, you just wanted to see your mum and dad and your sort of family and friends. My school friends and sort of the people that I lived with, it was without them I wouldn't have been able to do the amount of hours that I was doing. My school friends used to put all my schoolwork in an envelope, send it to wherever I was in the country so that I could do all my schoolwork and keep on top of it. So it was just nice to be able to go and see them and go out for dinner with them and celebrate with them. Um, yeah, it was difficult. I was very lucky in the, school, the fact that my school were very supportive of me. Um, if I was getting behind on my work, I could always go and speak to my teachers and sort out deadlines. Um, obviously, I wanted to succeed in both my education and my sporting career, so um, on the other side of it, I was quite motivated to get, get on with both things. Um, but it's definitely down to my friends and my school that I was able to combine both sides of the life. Most gymnasts will get some sort of mental block throughout their career. Uh, mine was a twisting one. Uh, one and a half twist scared the life out of me. Um, don't know what it was that caused it and it happened just before Beijing Olympics and it can mess with your head quite a lot but just speaking to your coach, speaking to your teammates, taking it one step back can really sort of help you but Try not to overthink it. Gymnastics is so much about your brain, 90% mental of it. So if you stand there and say to yourself, I can do it, the likelihood is you will. Whereas if you stand there psyching yourself out, um, it will only make the problem worse.
I did um, some work with uh, Teen Choice Awards last year and some of the children on that programme that we were choosing as the winners, the amount of money that they've raised for charity and it was just incredible, the self selfish, selfish, selfless, yeah that's it, um, that they went through and it was just one child had been bullied at school and he decided it shouldn't happen to anyone so he set up a whole anti-bullying campaign at school he set up a whole um group so that kids could go to a room and talk to each other so that they found a new group of friends and helped them with the bullying so just seeing what children can actually do when they put their minds to it it's pretty much like this campaign um there's so many different ways that you can help a young child's life and those children have done so much for charity That is such a common question. Um, obviously, London 2012 meant so much more to me because I'd done it since I was seven years old and it was kind of, from 2004, that was my Olympic dream. I wanted to pick up an Olympic medal. Um, Dancing on Ice came at the right time in my life. I'd just finished the Olympics and I got the phone call asking whether I wanted to be a part of it. And it was a whole new challenge, a whole new world of fake tan and fake eyelashes, but I embraced it, I loved it. Um, but every Sunday night, I loved it. I loved being able to perform live on a national television programme. Um, quite a lot of the other contestants, it terrified them because they weren't used to having to perform on the moment. A lot of them were obviously actresses and actors and they were able to just say cut, whereas live on a Sunday night programme, you can't do that. So. Um, London 2012 is obviously a lot harder to pick that medal up but I love the the opportunity that I got with Dancing on Ice and it, it definitely taught me a new life away from elite sport. Hi, we're Great Sankey Gym Club. It was really fun to have Beth come in and watch us as we did our gymnastics. I love gymnastics so it was really inspiring for her to come. She was really friendly and excited about her charity. It was inspirational because Beth had us achieve so much. When Beth came in, I asked her to sign a leotard of my sisters and it was really cool. I think I'm going to have it framed and put on the wall. She's a lot friendlier in person yeah, than you yeah. see on there because she's so like, focused on winning. <laughs> 